Welcome to the Character Sheet, comicbook.com's official home for all things tabletop and fantasy. Today, I am joined by a very special guest. I am joined by Chris Prynowski, the CEO and founder of Titmouse. Now, if you have heard of Titmouse, I'm sure, I'm sure if you uh, are a fantasy fan, especially a fan of animated fantasy... Uh, you probably have heard of Titmouse because they have, uh, you know, made it quite a splash. They've done a few different projects. Uh, probably, if you're a viewer of these ch this channel, uh, you probably know them as the people behind the Legend of Vox Machina and the upcoming Mighty Nine cartoons. Um, so, Chris, how are you doing? To how are you doing today? Doing great. Ready to uh, ready to make a character. Yeah, yeah. So today we have something really cool. We are going to be. Uh, talking a little bit about how Dungeons and Dragons and tabletop RPGs kind of foster creativity and how one informs the other. And so as part of this, we are going to create a D&D &D character. And then Chris is actually going to do a like rough drawing of what this character could look like. Um, so th th before we dive into all of that, let's talk a little bit about tabletop RPGs. And, you know, you know, how, how did you get started with D&D? How did you get started with tabletop RPGs? What was your first game? Have you been doing this since you were a little kid? Or uh, tell me a little bit about it. Yeah, more or less. Um, yeah, when I was probably like nine years old, I got the first edition basic set, but I didn't really understand that they didn't have YouTube or like shows like you have to like learn when I was a kid. So there was like, no, like where you had those books. And I'm like, man, what even is this? I thought it was cool. And I would like mm -hmm. draw the lizard man and stuff and be like, well, this is cool, but I don't really know what it means. And then like a year later, probably I'm guessing when I was 10, uh, my friend's older brother ran us through a game and we were like my group of little 10 year old friends. And I were like super hooked at that point. And then we would play every day after school and, uh, you know, back then we didn't even, you know, we played like kind of like it to the degree that we could understand it. It was mm -hmm. like probably a reduced rule set, first edition, no encumbrance, of course. <laughs> you know, the, uh, but we even like, it was just like whoever wanted to be the DM would be the DM. We would just run a module and not read ahead and not prepare. And like whoever got it, they'd be like, all right, open to this page. That's where we left off. This is what we're doing now. You know, so it, it, it was fun. And then I did that probably until I was in, you know, six, maybe a little bit in the seventh grade. And then I was like started, you know, riding on a skateboard and stuff and put it down for until I was an adult. And then probably in my like late twenties, early thirties, really picked it up again and, and, and played hard, but it wasn't, you know, and we played a lot of other games too. You know, we got into other you know, we started with D and D like most like, you know, entry, it's your like entry to into the world, but we played so many, so many, I think, uh, like villains and vigilantes was a big okay. one for us. The superhero one car wars was a, a big one for us. The Steve Jackson one, uh, even to the point, I remember my mom was like, why are you smashing up all your like hot wheels cars? And I'm like, well, I gotta have like the battle damaged version. Of it. <laughs> she didn't understand what I was doing. You know? <laughs> so, yeah, you, you know, I think they're making a new version of car wars. I'm like, oh, pretty sure. Great. That. Yeah. Um, and you know, as an adult, I've played a ton of different games, you know, we've got a bunch of different groups and, you know, but a lot of times we end up back, back at D and D, you know, and I probably use, I'm at the, I'm at the, 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 the bookends of it, the bread of D and D, not the not the meat where I either play first edition or fifth edition. Yeah. Like that's that's it pretty much. You know, <laughs> none of those metal editions. <laughs> so you know, one of the things that I, I don't think it's talked about about folks who, you know, were playing D and D in like the seventies and the eighties. And a really good friend of mine uh, explained, you know, you know, what what it was like to play D and D and part of that. And part of that was Dungeons and Dragons really, you know, uh, you know fostered creativity. You know, people were drawing yeah. their characters back then. Did yeah. did D and D kind of like help spur on your like artistic pursuits and kind of like was it one of the seeds that would eventually become your artistic yeah. career? Or I mean, I was already already into drawing, but I think it it, it definitely you know it was it was a useful skill to have mm -hmm. in playing D and D. But I think even more so than the technical drawing side, it 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 pushed the you know the the creative thinking side and the storytelling and the improvisation and the you know all that stuff and 
you know, I think like most tables, you, you know, certainly back then, and I think now, and especially with all these streaming games, you know, you, you're trying to make your friends laugh and stuff like that. So it, it definitely pushes, you know, you develop some more like even even if it's unintentional, you know, uh, improvisational comedy skills. Yeah. 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 To, to say it in the way Liam Liam Neeson says it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what was you know give, give give me a good like story from your tabletop from from your early days as uh, right. as sitting at the table. You know what what was the craziest thing that happened to you when you were exploring Dungeons and Dragons in those early days? Man. Whew, from my early days it's tough to remember the specifics. I do remember that we got to a point where even we realized that we were overpowered you know because we would play every day after school and you know, we were pretty freewheeling with the you know with the xp and the, the magic items and stuff like that because it was fun and then we got to a point where it's like man our guys are too powerful we got to start <laughs> over they've like and we would invent stuff you know it's like because you're little kids and you're having fun it's like yeah guy invented a submarine and he's got an underwater fortress and you know all this stuff and it's like ah, now we're kind of undefeatable so we had a point at which we started over again <laughs> and that was a big big deal you know for for us because you know you get invested in those characters oh really of course become, like like real real people to you <laughs> uh so you, I mean, obviously you work oh, in. The oh, I'll tell you one from okay. from, from villains and vigilantes, right? Yeah. So I had you're going to see where this is going right away. So you're trying to come up with an original superhero character, which is tough because there's so many out there. And I'm like, all right, I got one that nobody has yet, and it's a cool sounding name. And he's going to be a cool snake character, and he's going to have a laser whip, and because he's a snake. He's going to be called Venom. There's no character called Venom. And then, like, the next year, Venom was, like, introduced. <laughs> I'm like, no, it's my character. So I, I have a really good, uh, hilarious uh, superhero story. So, like, I, I love superheroes as a kid. You know, read all the comics. And so, you know, like like every kid, I had, you know, my my own, like, OP, you know, comic comic character. Yeah. And uh, his, his name was Blue Streak. And, you know, yeah. it was you know generic superhero stuff so when i started to like discover the internet uh my my username for a long time was blue streak and everyone would go oh so you're a transformers fan i'm like what like there's a blue streak transformer and so i had to quit because everyone's like that's a transformer right i'm like <laughs> like oh 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 <laughs> like i don't know anything about transformers so all these people come up to me and they're like oh, i love transformers like uh, clearly you love transformers too as someone named blue streak so like look out like you sitting at the keyboard with like wide <laughs> eyes i'm just like i'm gonna have to change my username or something uh so you know obviously you know you you've brought some of the most iconic characters in the tabletop world to life, you know, with Vox Machina. But what's like the difference between drawing someone else's character and coming, trying to come up with like the look for your own character is one like easier than the other or, or, you know, what, what, what are some like the, the difficulties and challenges that comes with, you know, adapting someone else's work with versus yeah. trying to create your own? I mean, Vox was like extra challenging mm -hmm. because not only, you know, there's like adapting a work, but, you know, there's like adapting a work that's like currently like beloved by a gigantic fan base. You know, there's ones where it's like take an old thing that nobody cares about and, mm -hmm. and re reboot it. And that's there's a little bit less risk in that, you know, or like take a thing that hasn't come out. Like we've done a lot of jobs. So it's like take this movie that is in production and you guys are going to do the TV series, but it doesn't have a fan base yet. So there's no like risk in like, well, we're going to take the beloved character from the movie and make it into a show when no one's seen the movie yet. You know? Mm -hmm. And I think there's also, you know, it's like, you know, with Vox specifically, you know, they had done that intro where they had like, you know, kind of in live action portrayed their own character. Yeah. Which is like kind of like the basis of a, I'm sure you, you know, I don't know what the number is of like how much fan art was generated, but it's high, you know, it's a high number. So there was kind of versions of it. And it's like, well, we need to do a specific version that is like the amalgamation of, 
you know, the essence of these characters, but doesn't rely too heavily on any of the fan art, you know, that is like kind of its own thing. We went through a lot of iterations on that to just kind of nail it down perfectly. Um, so it's challenging in a lot of ways. I mean, on the ways that it's not challenging, it's like, well, it's very clear who these characters are and you've got a really good starting point, you know, that's not like it could be anything. It's like, well, it could be, you know, a specific version of this thing. <laughs> Um, so, you know, as, as you started working in the entertainment industry, you know, um, and did, did you notice that like, cause what, something that has, you know, come up obviously with the explosion of fifth edition was like, it seems like everyone in Hollywood loves Dungeons and Dragons yeah. and you see like bits and pieces of like tabletop RPG elements, you know, specifically like, you know, the mechanics of the magic of like, you know, things that you wouldn't even think about, like, you know, uh, you, 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 you see like, you know, something like Blade Runner or, or, you know, any, any number of fantasy franchises and you can see that they're following like very set rules and it's just like you know very much like you can like that person probably read a tabletop rpg rule book. Yeah. <laughs> you know like did did you notice that as you were like you know getting big into like the you know you know starting your career in entertainment like did you notice that like you know like tabletop rpgs and stuff like that like like the signs were all around us <laughs> i mean in animation i think it's a really you know it's like that entertainment industry is relatively small compared to other, like, you know, compared to like, I don't know, dentists or something, you know, like there, there's a lot less yeah. people in the industry. And then the animation is even a way smaller subset of that. And I think like, just, you know, based upon the, the path that many people take to get into animation, there's always been a high number of like tabletop art PG people in animation. It's mm -hmm. just like, it's, almost kind of like a given that many of the people will will are familiar with it if not are like active players so i didn't really notice a transition because it was kind of always there yeah. <laughs> it <kinda> always existed. <laughs> um and it was always a touch point the thing that was different when i started versus now it's like oh i played as a kid or i recently got out my old rule books and played with my friends but there wasn't this thing that there is now where there's like a very current and gigantic active community, you know, that's like based upon, I think a lot with streaming and, and a lot, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, obviously critical role is on the forefront of that, like yeah. by far, you know, so, and those guys, I mean, that was a thing, you know, the way I got into that was because I knew them from voiceover work, like yeah. Sam Regal was a guy that worked for us, uh, very consistently as a voice director so i knew him the best and i knew the others through occasional voiceover sessions and i remember the time when uh sam and travis and matt came over for a meeting and they're like hey this you know do you know this this thing that we're doing and i'm like yeah you know i'm, I'm like aware of it they're like it's starting to like blow up this might have been like 2015 or something and they're like it's starting to get real big i think there might be an animated show and they knew I was even among animation. They knew I was a guy who was really into D and D. They're like, yeah, yeah. You D and D guy. Would you want to develop it? I'm like, yes, absolutely, yes, yes. <laughs> Let's. And you know, then it took a pause for a couple of years, which I think was good because it allowed them to get even bigger. And we really mm -hmm. dug into it again in 2018, and that's when we developed it. And you know, and then we ended up doing the Kickstarter in 2019 and then everybody knows the story after that. And probably, probably everybody who's watching this knows. The oh story yeah. A hundred percent. Well, you know, uh, I I do want to talk to you more about that, but we should probably actually build a character now. So yeah. I'm gonna, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, I I could talk to you for like hours about. Yeah. Things, but, uh, I'm I'm gonna have our producer Pete uh, pull up a a, a character. Uh, you know, we're using D and D Beyond. Uh, yeah, we yeah. we have we have ourselves the the pre uh, filled characters. Um, so yeah. I I think you know. So how I'm gonna let you kind of take take over here when you're building a character. Where yeah. do you start? Do you do do you start with a, a concept a name? Do you do you think about you know uh, you know in D and D it's race or ancestry? Um, you know do you, do you ha where where do you start? What what is the starting now, point for your your characters? Now this is going to be it's not going to be super helpful for for this particular exercise, but generally you know as I've you know you know gotten older and we have less time for like really like 
like campaigns that stretch over long periods of time with regular mm -hmm. characters with the same players. I play it a lot more in like games that are like, hey, it's this group and we're playing maybe a one shot or we're going to play for a set time period. So a mm -hmm. lot of times I'm not thinking about the long term. I'm thinking about our our party that we're playing with. So a lot of times I think about like who else is in the game and what they're likely to play, or even I'll be on a, you know, a text chain with them and be like, all right, what does the party need? You okay. know, who's gonna, like, it's like, Oh, that guy always plays a magic user. He's going to play a magic user. It's like, I'll, I'll be a cleric. They, they, no one ever. It's like, all right, I guess I'll play a cleric. You know, it's like, <laughs> they always need a cleric. And then it's like, I guess somebody has got to do it. So, uh, yeah, a lot of times it's like filling the gaps unless I'm the first one in, yeah. uh, if I'm, if I know it's going to be one where, I mean, what's good D and D beyond helps with this a lot. Like I would always be like, Hey, if it's going to be a game where we get real drunk, I'll play like a fighter or something where I don't have to think about how spells work, but D and D beyond does, does so much of the work for me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> doesn't it? it. <laughs> you know? And, and hey, D and D Beyond's not even paying us for ads for this. They're just Dang, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm All a right. subscriber. I'm a paid subscriber. Uh, as, as am I. As am I. <laughs> as is Pete. And you know, we're we're all benefiting from it now. So, anyways, okay. So we got our core classes here. Let's go and yeah. pick. Them. You know, would be a fun one. I think for let's do a rogue. You uh, know, something a little, a little. You know, something that's not as as uh, as goody goody. Okay. I think it'd be fun, fun for this, 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 for a drawing. If we're getting to a drawing at the end of this, uh, <laughs> no, no, I think that's great. So, um, so we're gonna we're gonna sit the rogue at level three because I believe that's where we get the subclasses for that. Um, cool. Okay, it was yeah, yeah. I was I was spot on. Look at that. <laughs> Look at me. Uh, nice. Knowing knowing the subclasses, I'm an always DM, so I know yeah. nothing about like you know character creation other than like I get build my NPCs how I want. Yeah, um, yeah. All right. So, uh, you know, obviously at third level, uh, you get to pick a subclass. Uh, yeah, any, yeah. Any, any particular uh, subclasses that you want to, you, you, you. What do we got through? as options here? I don't generally play, uh, so which is why you, you, I'm... Got your, you got your assassin. Go, go ahead and pull it up uh, really quick. Arcane trickster. You know, Ooh. that's, that's the one the magic oh. one. Uh, yeah. The inquisitive one. That's that's a uh, kind of your like investigator, uh, sort of uh, almost like Sherlock Holmesian type of uh, yeah, let, person. Let's, let's do the trickster. Yeah, okay. Okay. I think that'll be fun. You yeah. Know, we'll give, yeah. You magic, give some magic on that thing. No, uh, my uh, one of my favorite players. Uh, her character was an arcane trickster, and you know she only knew how to do like three spells, but by yeah. God, she <laughs> make it awful. Used work. them well. <laughs> um. Okay, so you know one of the cool things, obviously, about rogues, uh, you know, they 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 are your kind of jack of all trade characters, and so they come with a lot of proficiencies. Um, yeah, yeah. So you know, obviously, in addition to the the light weapons, uh, first first and foremost, before we we jump into that, what what type of weapon? We, yeah, uh, you know, are, 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 is this a dagger rogue? I think um, yeah, I think I think he's just, dude, let's 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 make this character a stabby character. I think a dagger character is a good one. Yeah. Now, look at Pete. They can have a lot of daggers, right? Because they're 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 the trickster. They can hide them hide them places. I uh yeah exactly unlimited daggers just daggers. Yeah. No one ever asks where all these in daggers the come from. In the back of the belt <laughs> under your hat. <laughs> look at him. He's he's loading them up. Okay. Uh, Pete, take us back to the proficiencies really quick. Let's let's see what sort of uh, proficiencies we want to choose from. So, you know, obviously, rogues come with a lot of skills. Uh, we have even chosen a race for this character yet. We might want to start, choose a race because that gives us some proficiency. Yeah. All right. Uh, all right. Bump, bump us over to race, Pete. Let's let's go and yeah. pick out because there's like a hundred of them. This uh, is D &D one race. thing that I love that they've integrated into D and D beyond and fifth edition is the no limitations on like class race stuff because that was always yep. frustrating and then we just ended up making it our house rule it's like any anybody can lay anything it doesn't matter you know when, when i, I uh, decision when i started playing uh Baldur's Gate three i was actually like taken aback by the fact they only did core races but plus yeah, like yeah. Ranking. i was like wait what what <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do, do you do you do you have a particular uh, race that you are oh, leaning? Yeah, let's do a lizard folk. 
Oh I'm yeah, we're something that'll be fun to draw. You know? Hell yeah, lizard folk it is. Uh, so you know, lizard folk not only do they have the natural armor, the hungry jaws, uh, they 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 can breathe. They can't breathe underwater, but they can hold their breath, and they have this nature's intuition skills. So you get to choose between animal handling, medicine, nature, perception, stealth, or survival. So uh, Dude, stealth, he's tricky. Yeah, you know, of course. Stealth. Yep, stealth. <laughs> uh and uh you know do we do do we want to go with uh i mean perception is the the obvious one but you know we could go with something like survival or nature because you're probably going to check perception with one of the other four yeah 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 yeah. let's let's do survival okay survival yeah yeah so this is you know now i'm getting almost getting like a rambo vibe you know (laughs) you know covered in mud you know the mud streak over the lizard face um oh yeah so we 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 have even more proficiencies to choose from now (laughs) um and and you know the nice thing about rogues is you can basically choose about anything uh when it comes to these proficiencies um, all right, let's uh, pull up. Pull, yeah, we obviously perception. Uh, that that's a that's a default one for a rogue. Uh, what else do we got? Um, let's see here. Uh, oh yeah, yep. Slide of hand. <laughs> Pete's Pete's just like going. He's yeah, he's yeah. he's, he's, he's helping us pick some obvious ones. Um, you yeah, know, yeah. Uh, uh, deception. We gotta go deception. Obviously, deception is something I yeah. really think we need to do. Oh, yeah. and acrobats. Yep. Yeah, okay. No. Gotta uh, be you able know, to jump I, around. Yeah, well, yeah, he's a lizard, you know, yeah. lizard yeah. jump. <laughs> um, and and they have roguish expertise. So we get to choose two things uh, that they are really good at. Um, so what 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 is you know this rogue who is like exceptional at like six different things? What 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 is the rogue best at? Let's see. Can you click them so I can see them? Because yeah, I don't, can, like I said, can, say, you, can we get a pull down list at all? Stealth. Do we got stealth already? Yeah, but these are these are the ones that they're like super good at. So not only are they proficient at it, so we got our choice. Oh, our six choices are sounds fun. Okay. Oh, but that's his proficient. But he's super good at sliding. Yeah, he's super yeah. proficient. So we we chose uh-huh. nature, uh, or we chose yeah. survival. We chose stealth. We chose perception. Yeah, sleight yeah. of hand, deception, of hand. and acrobatics. So we get to choose he's two of those. Able to trick you with the with the thing, and then you don't know where it is. Yeah. Where's the dagger at? You can't tell. Yeah, yeah. It just like appears out of their hand. Like, it, just, it just like basically, and you don't even know if it's magic because he's an arcane trickster. Yeah, there you um, go. All right. All right. Uh, so what what do we want as our second one? Uh, we we got our uh, we 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 we've got acrobatics, deception, perception, uh, uh, survival, uh, stealth, and then you can also choose your thieves' tools so that you can pick. Oh, you know, you can pick any lock. Yeah, I think he's more of a deception, like, you know, maybe he's, yeah, maybe he's super good. If he's doing sleight of hand and deception, he's good at tricking. He's okay. a trickster. He is a trickster. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we, we've got our level three rogue here. Um, yeah. uh, let's see here. So we have, uh, let's see, we got abilities, obviously. Yeah. Um, so now we have to actually choose what they're good at. Um, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, so. We get to increase one score by two and another score by one. You know, obviously with rogues, dexterity is all is is their thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, usually that is the stat that you choose. But you know, yeah, it's your yeah. character. How how would you? Yeah, that? I feel like with this guy, right? If he's going to be tricky, it's probably dex and charisma. Yeah. Right? So yeah. He could, so he could be like a deceptive. You know? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, would, do you do you roll characters, or do you tend to? Um, uh, do I generally you, roll. Okay. Uh, I, don't, I don't have the dice with me right now, but we could use the, the, the we could use these dice. Yeah, I think. Oh, there we go. Look at that. I know. Cool. Oh. Look at that. They look heavy. Oh, is this is this is roll four? Pick the best three. Style? Yeah, pick the best three. So uh, that that, that like we this. got ourselves an eight. Not not great. Right. Uh, <laughs> man, these are very heavy dice. Oh, I, I see some sixes there. Six six oh, and yeah. four. Oh, oh oh yeah. There we go. There's That's a four. Sixteen. That's a sixteen, man. Oh, oh that is a sixteen. You uh, know, my day jobs in banking. You'd think I'd be able to do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not uh, quite as good on that one, but you know, 
could be worse. That six kind of bailed you out there, right yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> so I used to have I used to have my players uh, roll character, you know, roll their stats all the time until like somebody came over and it's like, listen, I rolled while I was at home and I had nothing but eighteen. So I'm, like, I'm <laughs> sure you did. Yeah. I'm sure you did. Standard array for everyone. See, I think when I was a kid, you tried to like get the best stats but yeah as i've gotten older i find it more fun of a it's almost more fun to play an underpowered character or a character yeah. with weaknesses because you don't know what's gonna happen you know you get it one of the most fun games i played in we we got to play my group got to play with rob Kuntz when he came out to la and he had us roll live in front of him not uh like just roll three oh in boy. order like no, like no arranging, and I got a three intelligence, and it was the fun. It was so fun to play that character because every you, bad decision, I was like, "Oh, I should make the worst decision," and he would give me XP. He's like, "You're playing the character, like you're doing." You know, it's like, you know, every bad thing, every stupid decision got rewarded. Did this. you play as a barbarian? I can't, man. I wish I could remember. It was. I don't think so. I can't. I can't remember. It wasn't. Yeah, because I wasn't like a, a rush in the room kind of guy. I can't remember. It um, was, uh, yeah, I should so, remember. That. So uh, Pete, Pete, uh, you know, went and assigned us uh, assigned us the stats uh, for oh. us. You know, obviously dexterity and charisma. We're going to do those sixteens. Yeah, uh, he, he surprisingly went with uh, intelligence of twelve, which makes sense because yeah. you know the deception stuff. But that means yeah. the constitution. No bonus to the Constitution. Hey, uh, that's all right. This guy's going to be sneaky. He's yeah, not going to be a brawler. He doesn't get hit. He's going to be hiding hit. in shadows. <laughs> yeah, his, his, he starts off with a base AC of six of uh, like you know thirteen, and that's before he even puts armor on. Yeah, he's uh, going to be climbing up the walls. All right. So you know, obviously, standard array of uh, stuff. Uh, any particular type of armor that you you think you'd, you'd think you'd have. Man, he feels like a leather guy, or maybe a studded leather guy. Like so, that. since since he's a lizard man, do you think that he's wearing leather made of like you know discarded <laughs> like you know like snake skin? Oh, or, maybe, or, yeah, yeah, you sure. know, like he's he wears he wears like you know when he like uh, sheds his skin, he like goes and yeah. tans it. Yeah, it could be. Um. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I, you know, we, 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 we know our weapons. We know our armor. Uh, so uh, let's uh, let's uh, get to drawing. Okay, right on. Should yeah. I do this? All right, I'm gonna have to turn. I don't know if I'm gonna be so good at you're gonna be so good at seeing me. Oh, that's okay. You're, you're you know you're to the side, and so we we get to see your work up here on the scre screen. So this is coming up on this screen. All right, let me see. I'll do like a like a rough color first. I'll yeah. Get you in a guy here. Let's see. All right. So when you're doing like character design, you know, right. you're 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 you know roughing out a character. How many, you know, how how many uh, you know drawings do you typically do when you're it trying to like you know, it, it, it sometimes it comes to you quick and sometimes it doesn't. Mm -hmm. You never know how it's going to how it's going to work out. Okay, he's going to have he's going to have a long tongue cuz he's going to use that for stealing. Too. Okay. Nice. He can, he can steal with his tongue, kind of guy, you know. And he's gonna let's see how we gonna do his armor here. We'll do. Let's see. Let me get his basic body proportion. He's gonna have his he's a lizard folk. He'll have a tail. See, that's the thing. He'll he'll use his tail and his tongue. Yeah. You know, we all have these kind of some kind of more lizardy way. I don't know. It looks more well. Whatever. You know what? <laughs> who knows how who knows how his uh, lizard folks body works you know the limbs are probably you know <laughs> we're, this guy's probably just thankful that you know the limbs aren't uh, like vestigial yeah, you know? yeah yeah he's gonna have this and he's gonna have let's see what i want to give him give him like those like oh those yeah those yeah those the one there. the one big yeah. talent i love yeah, it yeah yeah and let's see, he's got the he's got the leather armor. We said it's gonna be studded to some degree. So we'll have that. And like you said, maybe some lizardy bumps and things on there. Gotta give a guy pouches. He's gotta have a lot of Oh pouches. yeah. 
Right. Listen, I I grew up. I grew up in the nineties. All characters have to have pounds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'll give him a couple spiky things on Oh, him. yeah. We, he's got like that little bit of a, like the iguana look going on. I'm going to give him like something in his tail that he stole, too. Oh, nice. Like, who knows what that is? Gold pieces or something. And then what should he be doing? You know, he's got to have maybe his hand behind his back because he's sneaky, right? Mm -hmm. You don't know what he's up to. And then he's this hand here. Let's see. He's kind of, I'd say, like he's like kind of palming a dagger behind his forearm, right? So, whoever the person is here, if they're looking at it, they don't know what he's doing. He's just got his arm down there. Mm -hmm. He's palming it. I like with the with the lizard, you know, with the lizard eyes. He's got you can't you can't tell if he's like happy. Yeah, or yeah. it's just like cold-blooded, you know, yeah. expressionless face. Uh, oh, yeah. Great. Yeah. So that's behind his back there. Yeah, so, this is going to be the gist of this guy. Be a so, so I realized we forgot to do the most important thing when we were creating this Oh, character. give him a name? We didn't give him a name. All right. Let's see. Oh, he's crafty. Let's see. Like, if, you're a, if I'm naming like a barbarian or somebody... You want to give him like a brutal name, but this guy, he probably doesn't want to come across as a guy, you know, if he's being deceptive and sneaky, mm -hmm. he wants to have a name that you're not going to identify him as somebody who is deceptive and sneaky, right? Oh, yeah. Do, you know, do, do, you, do you think he's he just has one, you know, he, he's yeah. like one of those like, like, like Madonna, uh, one, yeah, one yeah. name sort of person? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah let's see. His name, what should he, what is this guy called? He's, uh, he's definitely not a thief. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He's, uh, uh, like, I mean, you can give him one of those whimsical names, like, like, uh, trustworthy trusterson or something. Trustworthy <laughs> trusterson. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, why don't we call him that? So, we'll give him one of these, like, you know, oh of, yeah okay the, man that's gonna take too long to write his whole name out like yeah that. i i i, I oh. didn't think we were going to go <laughs> 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 so i was hey you know i was i was gonna be super impressed there it's been a while since you know the calligraphy came out yeah <laughs> yeah i'll give a oh, flourish there. on the end there uh, well there we have it look at that yeah, look at this now we got this going on Trustworthy justice and get him. He's so trustworthy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, there, there we have it. So you know, you, you know, now, now I fully expect uh, trustworthy Trusterson to make an appearance in a, a future Titmouse production. <laughs> uh, just, just this non-blinking lizard man just robbing people blind in the background of one of your episodes. Right um, on. <laughs> nice. Well, and uh, and he's he's already got his own icon up there on D and D Beyond. Look, uh, okay. So, you know, I, I guess you know, like my 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 final question for you is, you know, obviously, you know, uh, creativity. You know, what if if somebody wants to eventually end up creating like the the next Titmouse, you know, yeah. uh, get into animation and stuff like that. What, what what advice do you have for them? Like what, what, what should they do to end up sitting where you're sitting now? I think draw all the time, right? If you find mm -hmm. yourself getting bored of drawing, I, I, I liken it to, you know, this animation thing, it's a craft that takes a lot of, depending on what role you want to be in. But generally, you know, if you want to be in some aspect of the, the visual artistic side, right, which is what I think a lot of if you're talking about animation, people, people want to get into, you know, animating or character design or storyboarding or background design or background painting or any 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 discipline in animation. I just say, like, draw all the time, draw all the time. And if you don't have that, that drive to draw all the time, or if you get bored of drawing you know, really think about like, how do you want to do this? I feel like, you know, I would talk about this when I had students or do, do uh, like, you know, like little 
like talks, you know, at, at, at conventions and stuff. And it's like, there's like, it's, it's, there's, you know, it's like being like in professional sports or something. Like mm -hmm. if you want to be a basketball player and you don't want to play basketball, like all day long, maybe it's not for you. <laughs> yeah. If you want to be, a, you know, an animation artist and you don't want to draw all day long, maybe it's not for you. So find out, draw all the time and and and, and it, you'll get better if you draw all the time. It totally is a skill that you can learn. You know, there are people who have, you know, a kind of like, you know, natural talent, but that needs to be cultivated. I find it's much more likely that if you have the desire and the drive and 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 put in the work that you will become the best artist versus someone who who you know like could draw real well when they were a kid and doesn't put in that work so just yeah. draw a lot draw a lot that's it you don't even right. need a lot of money you could draw on loose leaf paper with a you know number 2 pencil or a big pen or something you know well and if you if you need something to draw go just pull up uh your tabletop uh, rpg yeah and exactly. open up the page and just find go. something that catches your eye there you right. go <laughs> well uh that's all the time that we have today thank you so much for coming on this was a blast right I on. Loved it. yeah I had a great time yeah no thank you thank you so much and uh you know absolutely love your work uh obviously mm -hmm. You know, I think anyone who's watching this video uh, is is a big Titmouse fan because uh, you you guys you guys are the shit. Uh, so uh, thank you very much for coming on. Uh, as always, hit those like and subscribe buttons, uh, and be sure to check out the the you know uh, what what is going to be the next Titmouse show that's going to be hitting hitting the streams or the you know air. Let's see. I'm not sure what's launching. When is, when is this? uh Jan january 2024 and so it'll be out in january yeah i'm not sure what's launching next currently the, the last thing we have a few things that launched recently like scavengers rain which is on okay. max i think would oh, be a, yeah. people people like that if you haven't seen that check that out i mean that's yeah. already the whole season is up um but it, it launched in the fall um the most reason a season of big mouth launched in the fall um uh i don't have any dates and if you know if i did i don't think i could talk to him on any of the box or mighty nine stuff um there will be another season of star trek lower decks coming oh yeah year, uh, but it's going to be way later in the year uh i think those are probably things that align with your audience yeah yeah, yeah. absolutely <laughs> so I, say, I totally forgot that you guys did scavengers reign like we we love that show so cool. all right nice. well uh, until next time, uh, keep watching. Thank you for watching the channel. Go check out Titmouse's stuff.